good day once again. Uh, this is screencast number two of section two, and hopefully I haven't lost you totally in the mechanical advantage and speed ratio. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, friction and efficiency. Uh, there is a myth um, within using machines, and that is that we can calculate everything right away and that's how it is. But in the real world, uh, machines are not really good at uh, working without uh, uh, being opposed to some sort of um, friction or opposing energy. And that's where we're going to talk about efficiency. Uh, so today's learning target, what is friction and how does friction affect the performance of a mechanical device? So let's start right away with three images here. And a simple question, I'm going to sound very silly to ask, but I'll ask it anyway. Where would you slide further? On the sheet of ice on the left, in this field of grass in the middle, or on the wet pavement on the right? Where are you going to slide the furthest? Don't. I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm sure you can guess, but just pick one. Another question for you. Why do bobsledders crouch so low? Why do bobsledders crouch so low? Let's look at these. How is friction reduced in these situations? I think before we go any further, we need to define friction. Okay, Friction is a force that opposes motion. Okay? It's caused by the roughness of materials as they slide past or over one another. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, And some surfaces, even though they feel incredibly smooth to us, are actually quite rough. Take, for example, this uh, surface of this is a surface of glass underneath an electron microscope. Even glass that feels smooth to our touch is quite rough. Look at this crystalline shape. That is exceptionally rough at the at the very small particle level. Okay, so when we talk about friction, it's how two things, whether it be uh, the tires on the ground or your knees on the pavement when you wipe out after a run or a sled on the snow, okay? Everything when they touch each other uh, experiences some sort of friction, okay? So in order for machines to work properly, the force of friction needs to be overcome. And that means it has to work or put in a little more force to overcome that. Think of like when you push a, a box up a ramp. Where is there friction when you're moving a box up a ramp? all along the bottom of the box, right? Where the box and the ramp are essentially touching and the box is being dragged across the ramp. That force needs to be overcome. So if we go back to this image here, how is friction reduced? Okay, Start thinking about how, how we reduce that friction, reduce that uh, opposing force. Uh, looking at these ones here, how do you think friction affects these simple and complex machines? Let's start in the middle picture, in the skateboard ramp. Okay, where is there friction in the skateboard ramp? Well, there should be friction between the wheels and the ramp, right? There's probably even friction between the air and the rider, causing them to try and slow down, and the rider is trying to speed up every time. Okay, so there's there's friction there, and you have to oppose the friction on the wheels. You want to get past that friction so your wheels don't stop. What about the door stopper? Where is there friction? There's friction between the ground and the doorstop. What's why it stops? Picture on the right, the cranes. Okay, where is there friction in the cranes? There's friction at the top where it rotates. There's friction in the gears. Because you know there's gears in that to make it work and to make it spin. There's friction in the pulley, the large pulley chain that's, that's uh, hung there. So there's quite a bit of friction in that. And on the far left there, that air, that compressed air engine, that engine, a car engine, works on air, not on gas or fuel or oil, air, which is pretty cool. Where is there friction in that machine? That would be any place that two parts are touching. All those little um, wheel and axles and that belt that's around every wheel and axle, huge amount of friction in there. So. Every time machines experience friction, it takes more force for the machines to work in order to overcome friction. So friction affects the mechanical advantage of a mechanical device. 
This is because in a machine, there is always some form of friction between moving parts. Anything that moves experiences friction between the two parts. It's also given off as a form of heat. You put your hands together, rub them together really fast. You keep rubbing, you keep rubbing, you keep rubbing. That's friction, right? And as you keep rubbing, you'll notice that your hands become warm. That is sometimes what happens with friction. It, it generates heat. Okay. Can you think of a useful situation where friction is useful? A good time where friction is useful? Well, here's just a few. Okay. Friction is useful in the center there with curling. They want that rock to slow down sometimes, so they would try and increase the friction. Uh, if you're uh, rock climbing, the type of rock climbing where you don't get any climbing supports or any or any cables, you need something to increase the friction between your hands and the rock. And they use this this uh, kind of like a rock powder. He's got that all over his hands there on the left. That powder reduces the sweat in the hands and allows the climber to grab on much more successfully to the rock. And on the right there, uh, that is a same same idea with a gymnast. A gymnast will take a whole bunch of chalk and rub it all over their hands as a type of powder, which allows them to grip, let's say, the rings or the uh, the pole vaulting uh, bars or anything like that in gymnastics that would increase the friction between uh, their hands and the apparatus giving them a much, much better grip. Okay. So that's that's friction pretty much in a nutshell. Uh, now let's talk about friction in machines. So you got this car engine running and it's just humming along and all the parts are going and everything like that and the engine gets really, really hot. You've all experienced that before. This is all generated due to friction within the machine and parts rubbing up against each other and moving at a fast pace and generating some heat. So true or false? A mechanical device can be 100% efficient. That means that all the force that's put into the machine is the force that you get out. Is that true? Would you be able to defend your why or why not? Okay, efficiency, just so we all know what we're all talking about here, okay? efficiency is the measurement of how well a machine or a device will use energy. Any machine, any machine, loses some energy as it operates. Usually, this energy is lost as heat due to friction. Now, this comes up a lot when I talk about this stuff. What do you mean by lost? As in, oh, I dropped my energy. I, I can't find it somewhere in my back pocket. What, what, lost, where does it go? Well, <laughs> being somebody who took a lot of physics and a lot of chemistry, this was important. We say that the energy is lost, and I put it in quotes there, by the way, I love that show, Lost. We put it in quotes, because it isn't really being used directly for the machine's task. Right? The friction that's, that's generated in a machine, all that heat that's lost, it can't be used again. And, and when it becomes heat, it's not wanted or needed by the machine, so it simply rises. We all know that warm air rises. So where does it go? Well, best answer I can say is back into the universe to be used somewhere else because there's a law in physics it's called the law of conservation of energy and that means that energy is neither created nor destroyed in the universe what that means is all the energy that's ever existed in the universe exists now and no energy will ever be uh, created again it's not like you know you you run out of cookies so you make another batch okay no Whatever energy we have is the energy we have, and if it's not used, or if it is used, uh, it's, it's lost. It's gone forever. Okay. So, if we say a machine will lose heat energy because of friction, and friction is in every machine, and actually machines need to overcome friction in order to work properly, can a machine ever be 100% efficient? And the correct answer every time is machines cannot be 100% efficient. And the reason is because they have to overcome uh, friction as heat. Okay? If, 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 if efficiency is a measure of uh, how well a machine or a device uses energy, the more energy that's lost, the less efficient a machine is. Uh, in complex machines, there are many parts or subsystems 
that are affected by friction and other factors. Think of a bike, right? There are different parts of that bike that have high points of friction. Now, because of this, most complex machines are not very efficient. But that doesn't mean they aren't good machines. In, in any case, though, no machine can be 100% efficient because that would assume that no energy is lost. And energy is lost as a form of friction or heat. Okay? So, how do we increase efficiency then? Well, we need to boost it. Low efficiency machines lose work or lose force due to friction. So how do you boost it? How do you boost efficiency of a car? How do you boost efficiency of a bike? What do you got to do? Well, let's say you just use a bike because we all know bikes. You could add a lubricant to the chain, right? There is, you're reducing the friction in the chain when it goes around in the gears and in the exchanger. If you reduce that friction, it works better. Okay, it's not 100%, but it works better. In a car, your tires are full of air. Something as simple as that will actually increase your gas mileage, which will increase your machine efficiency. Okay, your car does not have to put in more force to get the wheels to turn because they're full of air. Okay, and many people will miss that when they're maintaining their vehicles. You can increase fuel efficiency by simply inflating your tires. So both those scenarios, adding lubricant and inflating your tires, will reduce friction and increase efficiency, but never ever to 100%. Uh, so that's what I wanted to cover here. I wanted to cover what is efficiency, what is friction, how do we overcome friction, and can machines ever be 100% efficient? If you can nail those down and you're fully uh, uh, comfortable with those, then that's all you need to know in this screencast.